By the end of this lecture, you're going to understand the issues faced when testing a synchronous code in Jasmine. You're going to know how to use the Jasmine done function to handle asynchronous code. And you're also going to know how to use the alternative Angular only solutions for testing asynchronous code as well. We want to see how we can test asynchronous functions. So we change our auth service is authenticated function into an asynchronous one, one that returns a promise which resolves into a Boolean at a later time. We also then change our login component. We change the needs login function from a function into a property and we set the value of this property in the then callback from the promise returned from auth service. And importantly, we've done all of this in the ng on init lifecycle function. Probably not the best place to put this functionality, especially given that the value might change over time, but good for demonstration purposes. Now, our first attempt to test our code might be to try and test it without taking into account the, the now asynchronous nature of our application. So if I go into our test spec and I have a test specification file here, very similar to the previous lecture, just on change detection. We issue a change detection run, the initial one. This then causes the button to have the text log in. I then make the auth service return a promise, which then resolves to true. Not just true, but we return a promise, which resolves to true. I then call component.ng on init. And I'm just gonna say for a second, so when performing testing, we need to call the components lifecycle hooks ourselves, or the lifecycle hooks like ng on init. Angular won't do this for us in the test environment. And just as a reminder for what the ng on init function does, this then calls the is authenticated function and adds the then handler. We then issue another change detection run, and then we check that the uh, button text will be log out. So this is, this is our first attempt for testing our code. And if we ran this, we'd see we actually get a failure case. It's saying expected login to be log out. So this is failing on this line here. After all of our code, the login button isn't changing to the log out button. Now the reason for this is that by the time we run this last expectation, this last line here, the auth service is authenticated function hasn't yet resolved to a value. Okay, so by the time we run this code here in the login component, this function here hasn't yet been called. Therefore, the needs login is still true. And therefore, because it's true, we're showing login instead of log out. Now that's because, well, essentially this is asynchronous code. This hasn't yet been run because it's asynchronous. There are a few ways we can handle asynchronous code in our tests. One is the Jasmine way and two are Angular specific. Let's start with the Jasmine way. So Jasmine has a built-in way to handle asynchronous code and that's by the passed in done function to the test specs. So this is our test spec function here. And so far we've been defining our test spec functions without any parameters. So the parameters to our function, you can see it doesn't have any, it's blank. But actually Jasmine test spec files can take parameters. It is passed one, the one that is passed, the first one that is passed is a done function. And we call the done functions when all the asynchronous processing in our test spec is complete. Now we can figure that out by doing this. When we create a spy, I actually store, I can store the spy on a variable. I'm gonna call store it on a variable called spy. 
And what we can do with the spy is basically add a callback function, which will be called when this function, when the function we're spying on actually gets called by our component. So we can do that by spy.calls most recent return value, and then we add our callback here. So when the auth service is authenticated function is called by the component, we then want to issue a change detection run. So I call fixture dot detect changes. And from within here, essentially, essentially, I just want to run. And then from within this callback, this is where we actually need to issue our change detection run. And then this is where we need to issue our test for our expectation. Because only once this callback has been called, do we know that the component callback has been called and therefore only here is when the needs login function, needs login property has been changed to false. So if I go back in here, so the code being executed here is being executed in an environment where the component needs login in this function here. Only when this callback is called will the component needs login property be false. Okay, so this is why we're adding our test code from within this callback. Then after we're finished completely with our test code, we just call done. And this lets Jasmine know that we're complete with our processing. So now let me run the application. And everything passes because now we're handling the asynchronous part of our code via the done function and also handling uh, putting our expectation, our last test expectation logic in the callback from the is authenticated function. So Jasmine lets us create a synchronous test by giving us an explicit done function, which we call when the test is complete. And although this works, trying to understand the code can be a bit difficult as it jumps about and is not executed specifically in the order that it's written in. And understanding that when the spy function gets called requires kind of a deeper understanding of the auth service, which isn't really what we want to what we want to have in our test code. So Angular has another method for us to test asynchronous code via the async and when stable functions. So let's rewrite these tests to use these new functions, and then we're going to explain the differences. Now, to use the async and when stable functions, we actually need to import them. So if we go to the top of the file, they actually come from Angular Core Testing. So I'm just going to import them here. Async and when stable. So after we've imported the async and when stable functions, let's now go back into our test spec and start using them. So the first thing we do is we wrap our test spec function in another function called async. So let's get rid of done. And then we wrap our actual test spec function in another function. We close out like so. So the async function, which is defined by this, uh, now executes the code inside its body in a special async test zone. Now this intercepts and keeps track of all of the promises created in its body. Not just the promises created explicitly in its body here, but if some of these functions then call functions then call functions and through those functions, we create a promise, it tracks those as well. So within our component uh, ng on init function, we're actually requesting a promise from the auth service, running it inside the async test zone, will actually track that for us. It will actually track the fact that the component ng on init function, by calling it, creates a promise. That promise is tracked for us. And then instead of this spy calls most recent function here, we call fixture when stable. And then since we're not using the jasmine done function anymore, we can just get rid of that. So 
Running in an async test zone keeps a track of all of the created promises inside its function body. And then only when all of those pending promises have been resolved, does it then resolve the promise returned from when stable. So it keeps a track of all of the promises created from your application. And once all of those promises has been resolved, does it then call the code in our when stable function here. So essentially now this code here is only going to be executed when the is authenticated promise is resolved in the component and then we can detect changes and then we can uh, check to see that the button text changes to log out. So now if we rerun this test, everything passes like before. So by using the async and when stable functions, we now don't need to use the Jasmine spy mechanism of detecting when the is authenticated promise has been resolved. So we don't need to know about the inner workings of the auth service. We don't need to know that the is authenticated function returns a promise and we don't need to hook into that promise. We don't need to know the inner workings of our code. That's the advantage of using the async and the fixture when stable mechanisms is kind of a generic solution to all promises and to all asynchronous code that's in our uh, test code. So this mechanism is slightly better than using the plain Jasmine solution, but there is another version which gives us fine grain control and also allows us to lay out our test code as if it were synchronous. And that mechanism uses the fake async and tick functions so in order to use those, we have to import them at the top of our file. So let's do that. So similar to before, we wrap our test spec code in a fake async function. And like the async function, the fake async function executes the code inside its body in a special fake async test zone. And again, this intercepts and keeps track of all promises created in its body. But instead of using a fixture when stable function, we instead use a tick function. So the tick function blocks execution and simulates the passage of time until all pending asynchronous activities complete. So essentially blocks and waits for all promises to be resolved. So in this code here, when we call tick, the application sits and waits for the promise return from is authenticated from this auth service is authenticated function to be resolved and then lets execution move to the next line. Now don't need the fixture when stable function here and we can just lay out our code like so. So now if we rerun our test code here, we can see it passes again. But I'd say the big advantage of this mechanism is if you look at the code, it's laid out in a linear way. There's no callbacks we need to worry about. And it's written as if the code we were executing is synchronous. The fake async method does have a few drawbacks. For instance, it doesn't track any XHR or HTTP requests that we're making from our test. But then again, we shouldn't really be making any HTTP requests or requests to another server in an isolated test. It should really be isolated. So to summarize, if the code we are testing is asynchronous, then we need to take this into account when writing our tests. And there are three mechanisms we can use to do this. The first one is the Jasmine done function and spy callbacks. So we attach specific callbacks to spy so we know when promises are resolved. We add our test code to those callbacks and then we call the done function. Now this works but means we need to know about all the promises in our application and be able to hook into them. So alternatively, we can use the Angular async and when stable functions. By using these, we don't need to track the promises ourselves, but we still need to lay out our code via callback functions, which can be hard to read. So alternatively, we can use the Angular fake async and tick functions, as well as the advantages of the async and when stable functions. This additionally lets us lay out our asynchronous test code as if it were synchronous.